When I saw drift alone for the first time, it was badly degraded. In one area they tried to farm uh, sweet potatoes, a lot of aliens, Roy Crimes prim primarily, but it was a beautiful place, notwithstanding. The intent was to preserve it for permanent conservation, and in particular, not to allow it to be developed. This area along the coast here is, is under threat uh, from rampant development, and there's less and less of our natural environment left. And I wanted this to be one of the pieces that are not developed. So we were lucky here that we had a mixture of fanbos, of thicket, some remnant grassland, and also forest, the Afrigontane forest. Uh, walking around on the property, he found some flightless dung beetles. That's very significant because that indicates there were large herbivores here. It's probably buffalo. Historically, there were buffalo in the area. If you want to get your habitat back into balance, you need to reintroduce large herbivores. We introduced Nguni cattle, and from many points of view, um, they have transformed the property. But specifically from the dung beetle point of view, is our dung beetle population now had the original animal that it evolved with. If you look at the way Nguni cattle interact <coughs> with humans compared to, you know, the more common European cattle, uh, their history is that they migrated down from North Africa via East Africa with the Nguni people, which is essentially the Zulu and the, and, and the Swazi people. Um, and they slept in the kraals with, with the, 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 the humans. Um, so from that point of view, in terms of interacting, they are very easy to deal with if you handle them the right way, in a relaxed manner. On the other hand, if they, they are like wild animals in terms of predators, for instance, they are fiercely protective. Um, they have characteristics, for instance, when, when they calf, they disappear into the bush and they'll have their calf and they'll stay with the calf probably four or five days. And when the calf is strong enough to walk with the herd, then they'll come out with the calf and re rejoin the herd. Um, so. There's always that balance between the aggression to, for instance, dogs that they seem as predators uh, and to people. But it's also the way you approach them. Um, if you approach them in an aggressive manner, then you get a different reaction. So I keep on saying to my staff, if we need to herd them at any stage, is you do everything slowly and softly and you don't shout at them. And then, then they're happy to cooperate, even the bulls. The interesting thing about the dung beetles here west of Titsikama is with the demise of the large herbivores, the uh, buffalo and the elephant, for instance, um, they've, they've been under some threat uh, in terms of their breeding capacity where they, they need the dung of the large herbivores to effectively multiply. Um, and so the difficulty they face is, is trying to deal with the, the dung of, of, for instance, bushbuck or domestic animals to survive. Um, so where, where they have the opportunity, like here in Drifalane, of large herbivores that are not dosed with any um, pesticides. Um, they can then breed properly um, and they have, their population has exploded here on the farm. And so they bury these dung balls for breeding and for, uh, for, for food as, 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 a, as a food source. 24-7, so these little beetles are fertilizing the soil here, improving the soil fertility, 24-7. The other interesting thing about these dung beetles is that they are genetically similar to the dung beetles to, to the east of us, 
for instance in adult but they are different and the genetic differences indicate that they've been separated from the eastern population by at for about 10,000 years so the, the dung beetles that we have here are, are pretty unique when you get a particular area in balance a natural area you'll find that the microbiomes in the vegetation and in the animals are actually often very similar. Um, so they complement each other. That's why you need to have both. So it, it, it brings in opportunities for other creatures to enter the cycle. Um, it's beneficial on a wide range. If there's one thing that I think has made a huge difference here, it's the cattle. There's long been an attitude or a belief that if you leave nature, nature will take its course and solve everything. Well, no, that doesn't always happen because we have transformed those areas just by being there. So <clears throat> if, if, if you want nature to come back to, to regenerate properly, there are certain interventions that you have to take. You can't just leave nature to its course.